Hi everyone, welcome back to the Bioinformatics School channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can perform differential expression analysis using the R package called DSIC2. So that means you need to have this package installed, DSIC2. And you should also have these R packages installed. I have tutorials that show how to install R packages. So check the description box and you'll find the links to those tutorials. So that's about it. Now for the materials, I've already prepared them. The R script is also available, so check the description box and you'll find the download link and that you can use to download the materials. So take note of that. And this tutorial was made by following this online Galaxy tutorial on RNA data analysis. So in this tutorial, we are going to start from this section. Let's just scroll down. We are going to start from this section because I've already covered uh, those previous steps the qc the mapping the read continuation i've covered them in separate tutorials so that is why i'm going to start from here so if you're interested in those tutorials you can check the description box and then just follow them up okay so i've already prepared the materials here and so you need to make sure you download those materials i already have mine downloaded so i'll show you how and they look like so these are the data sets we are going to use we have this count matrix which has the read counts so we have the samples and we also have the gens and their respective read counts and we also have the design which is here so the design gives more information okay so we have our samples so the samples we also have the group that they belong to so we have treatment we have sequence so each of these samples will be either treated or untreated and then in terms of the sequencing will be either single end or pair end so this information is also needed when we are using the seek okay so that's why we need to have both files so make sure you download them and then you can proceed with the analysis so that's what we have so now that we are done with this introduction let's start the exercise so we will open up our interface or our r environments okay we are in the r environments now so what we are going to do first is to load our r libraries so i'll load mine in case you are new to the R environment, I will encourage you to watch my videos that show how to install R and R packages. So check those videos out. The links to those videos are in the description box. My libraries have been loaded. I will now set my working directory. So I'll use the directory which has the files, the directory which contains the files. So I'll say set WD and I'll indicate it here. So this is my working directory. So if I set my working directory, then whenever I want to load a file, I don't need to specify the path, the entire path. I just need to specify the file name and then it will be loaded. So let's look at that here. Let's load the count data. So I'll say count data, and then I'll say read.csv. And then I'll indicate the file name, which is count matrix.csv i'll say header equals true row.names equals one so i'll load it it has been loaded so i will now do some exploration here i'll check the column names to so count data i'll say call names count data to give their column name so we have them here these are the samples now let's Take a look at the data. Let's do a head to get a fair six records. So we have them here. So we have the gens, then we have um, the counts in uh, the samples here. So that's what we have. Let's load the sample information. We loaded the count data, now we are loading the sample information. So I will say, Sample info. And I say read dot csv. 
and then I'll specify the file name. So that will be design dot CSV. And then I'll say header equals two two dot names equals one. Again, I'll do some exploration here. I'll check the column names. We have treatments and sequencing. I'll also check the records. So I'll do a head to look at the first six records. So I have them here. So I have my samples and then I have treatments and sequencing. Now we are going to set factor levels. So when we talk about factors, factors refer to conditions or groups. Uh, there may be slightly different definitions if you check other tutorials, but uh, basically it's the same idea. So if you look at what we have here, the sample information, we have treatment. So for the treatment, if you check these samples, each of these samples will belong to either untreated or treated. And when we talk about the sequencing, each of these samples will either be single end or paired end. So these are conditions or groups. Okay, depend on I mean for how you want to define them. But then what you should take note is that because these samples here will belong to one of these groups, then the treatment becomes a factor because we can look at um, differential expressions. Um, between untreated and treated. So this becomes a factor. We also have sequencing. We can also look at um, differentially expressed genes um, in terms of the sequencing type. So we can compare single end and unpaired end. So sequencing also becomes a factor. So uh, we are going to use that information here and then uh, the SQL run the analysis for us. So let's look at how to set the factor level. So in this tutorial, in this experiment, we have two factors, so we are we are going to do a multi-factor analysis. So let's set them. So we are going to set the factors. So I will say sample info dollar treatment. I'm starting with that one first, and then I will set the factor. So I will say factor, and then I will say sample info treatments I'll do same for sequencing so I'll say sample info dollar sequencing and then I'll say factor sample info dollar sequencing so I'll run this command as well Okay, we are now going to create a DSIC object and import the count data and sample information. So we say DDS and we say DSIC data set from matrix. This is what we will use, DSIC data set from matrix. And then we indicate our count data first. So we say count data equals, and we specify our count data, which is count underscore data. Then we also need to specify the column data. So call data. This one is for the sample information. So we specify sample info. Then we come to design. So the design is used to specify the factor or factors. So here we have two factors. So our experiment is a multi-factor one. So if you have a multi-factor design and the seek tells us that we have to specify the factor of interest the main factor last okay. so in this tutorial we are interested in getting differential expressions for untreated versus treated so the treatment factor becomes our main factor or our primary factor we also want to account for the sequencing type that's a single end and then paired end and so this one here, the sequencing is also a factor, but then the main factor is treatment. Okay, so treatment is our 
factor of interest, but we also want to account for sequencing. And therefore, we will specify sequencing first, and then we specify treatment last. So we will start with our tilde symbol, and we say sequencing. And we say plus treatments. So let's run this command. We have now created a LISIC object. We have imported our count data and sample information. Now we are going to set a reference. So with a reference, we are going to use untreated as a reference. So we have to set that here. So that's how we do it. We will say DDS dollar treatment. And then we say factor. DDS dollar treatments. Then we say levels. So this is where we set the reference. So levels here. We bring out C and we say untreated and then treated. So the one that you specify first becomes the reference. So that is what we've done here. So we can now execute this command to set the reference. Perfect. Now we can proceed. We are now going to filter the genes. In the Galaxy tutorial, I did not see any filtering step, but I thought I'll bring this up so that you also learn how to filter genes. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to Keep only genes with read counts greater or equals to five. So this is what we are going to do. We will first get this expression keep, and I'll say row sums. I'll say counts EDS. Now I'll say greater or equals to. Five, greater or equals to five. So I'll issue this command. So what we've done is that we've given this expression. So that means that genes with read counts greater or equals to five will be kept here. Okay, the keep here is going to um, keep that record. This variable will keep that record. So all genes with counts greater or equals to five will be here and then we we'll issue this command so we say dds and we say dds again and we say keep and so what we are doing is that we are now selecting the genes that are in the keep variable so that's what we have here so first we issue this expression and now we are doing the subsetting to keep only genes with read count greater or equals to five. Now with the five, I selected it based on the original basic two tutorial, but the criteria for filtering, you have to decide that yourself. You can read papers and publication to see what was used and then try to um, use that. So this is a number that I chose um, from the basic two tutorial, so it's there's no reason per se for choosing this number. I just use that because I saw it in that original tutorial. So make sure that whatever number you are going to use, you can justify it. That's what I'll say here. Okay, so let's um, get this. Let's subset and get our yes. Okay, so we have done that. So now we are going to perform the differential expression analysis. So we will do that by running another command and then the seek two will perform some statistical tests. So that is what I have here. So we perform the statistical tests. So, so I'll just, let me just add this. So perform statistical tests to identify Differentially express. Yes, let me show the statements. Yes, so now we can proceed. So to perform the differential expression analysis, we will say DDS. And then we say DSIC DDS. 
So this will perform the analysis for us. So let's run this. So you will see some text here telling you what has been done. Okay, so we have done that. So now what we are going to do next is to get the results. So we will say rest. You can also use the seek results or whatever, but I will choose this one here, rest. That means results. So I'll just do this. Or let me just say the seek results. I think that should be better because I want it to be descriptive. So the seek results, and I'll say results DDS. Okay, so we have the seek results, results DDS. So let's run this command. So this will give us um, a table so i can see this i can see the sick results let's call this and then we will have the information here. so we have some description here as well to tell you um what has been done so you have your log two poaching chain treatment versus untreated we have this speed this test tasca test we also have this data frame which has um, some columns here so for every gen you have the base mean we have log 2 for chain we have the lfcsc we have um stats we have p value we have p and value now i'm going to leave the original um basic two documentation so that you can get the definitions for all these things here i'll focus on some of them so i'll focus on log 2 for change p adjusted value and then p value so take note of that and then maybe base mean because i just want to um go straight to the point this tutorial is just to let you know how to perform differential experience analysis so i'm not going to go into details with all of these stuff here so if you are interested in the statistics behind this tool then i'll recommend you check the documentation and then the publication and you get more information there so let's proceed so I have my basic results. So what I would like to do is to change this basic results data here into an R data frame so that we can easily manipulate that. So this is what I'll do. And before I even do that, let me also say that you can also order it here. But anyway, let's first change this um, into R data frame first and then we can come back to this one here. So I'll do that here. So I would say the seek results and then I will say as dot data the frame the seek results. So I'll run this. So now I have it as um, an R data frame. I can say class basic results just to see what will come up. So that's data dot frame. Now with the basic results, you can also order by let's say p value. So if let's say you want to order the result by p value, you can do it this way. You can say basic results ordered. And you can see the seek results order. And then you see the seek results dollar p value. So we can do this and then also bring our comma. So this will order the table for us. So we can do this. Now we can compare. So let's just do a head of the first one. We say head is seek results. That's what we have. And then we also have head. Let's say head is seek results ordered. So this one will list everything for us and increasing um, p value. Now, if you take a look at this one here, the first one, let's just take it here again. 
So you can see that here there's an any. Okay, so um, the any is used to whenever you see an any, that means that the gene expression status could not be determined by a sig2. Okay, so this becomes an outlier. So the sig2 has a, a formula for doing this, an algorithm for doing this, but I'm not going to detail. But you can turn this behavior off. You can turn this off, but that is something that I wouldn't cover now. But just to let you know you can turn that behavior off, and then proceed. I think it uses Cook's distance or so, yeah, um, for that particular computation. But anyway, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. But I just want to let you know that you can always turn that behavior off. Okay, so we have our results. When you have the results, you can also make some queries. For example. We can check for the differential expression status of some genes. Maybe you can find out if a particular gene is differentially expressed or not. So we have a question like that here. It says, Is this gene differentially expressed? We can do that here because now we have our R data frame. So we can say, We seek results, and then we specify the gene. I'll copy it and then paste it here. And then we can issue our command here. So we can call this and then find out if it was or if it is differentially expressed or not. So we can see that here. We can see the p value, we can see the p adjusted value. These are very, very small, they are less than 0 0.05. And we also have the log two four chain. So uh, this is differentially expressed, and it's downregulated because the number is negative. So that means um, this gene has been expressed in low levels. That's what this basically means. So we can do those queries there. You can also check for another one. Let's check for another one here. So it says, is this gene? This is the ID. Is this downregulated by the treatment? Let's find out. We can say the seek results, and then we can call that. We can specify that gene here, and then see if it's downregulated or not. So let's run this command. So we have that here. So uh, yes, it's also downregulated. Okay, because we can see that um, it's significant and it's negative. So it's also down regulated. So that's what we have. And if you check the Galen tutorial, let's check it. So let's go down to see the question here. So if you check it, you can see the solution here. But the solution may be slightly different from what we have because with the Galen platform, it also adds additional commands which we don't see. We are only using the graphical interface. So um, the result that we have is not the same. It's not exactly the same as what is here, but it's similar. That's what I want to see. So if you want to reproduce a analysis tutorial, then bear in mind that the result that you get using the command line tools may not be the same or may not be exact, may not be exactly the same as what you see on the analysis platform. But and the most important thing is to be able to reproduce this. So that's what I'm showing you. Because the Galaxy tutorial is great for beginners, but sometimes it's advisable to use the command line version of the tools. So that is why I'm trying to reproduce everything here using the command line version and also explain to you the steps so that you can always um, do some of the stuff on your own. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do. So let's go back to the R interface. So we are back to the R interface. What we are going to do next is to filter the data. So here we are going to use two criteria here. We are going to filter based on the adjusted p value and also based on the log two for change. So adjusted p value, we are going to use less than 0 0.05. And then log 214, we are going to use less than one and greater than one. So we are dealing with absolute value. So let's go back to the Galaxy page. I think the instructions are clear there, and then we'll see what to do. 
So if I analyze the page after the district two command, just scroll down. Scroll down to extraction and rotation of differential expressions. When you are here, it shows the criteria for filtering. So we are using this adjusted p-value less than 0.05. And we are also going to filter and then use um, an absolute, uh, lo lo absolute log two fortune value of one. That is also indicated here. So that's what I will use. So we have our two criteria. So let's go back to the R interface and then do the filtering. Okay, we are back. So our first filter based on adjusted p-value, that's a p adjusted value. And then I will also filter using the threshold of one, absolute value of one. That's the log two for change. So I'll start with the p adjusted value. So I will say filtered because we seek results. And I'll filter using this expression. And I'll see the seek results dollar p adjusted value less than 0 0.05. So this is the first step. So we have filtered that. Now let's look at the second step, and that'll be filtered course filtered we give our expression again say filter absolutes filtered dollar log do for change greater than one so this will be our second step so let's run this so we have that done so now we can check you can check how many genes are remaining after we had done the filter. So you can just say, let's do it here. You can say, then filtered. Let's start with the original one. So we say, them the seek results. So we have one, two, eight, three, three. And then let's look at the filter. We have two to two, so that means that those um, that have been significantly expressed, they are 222 genes. So these are our hits. Okay, so that's what um, this simply means. So once you get your DSIC results, you can filter. And again, for the criteria, you always have to consult the experts, and then they will tell you what criteria, or they will advise on what criteria to use to filter. So it's always important to um justify your criteria for filtering so so that your results can be reproduced okay so now we have that done so again we can make queries as well here but i will skip that because i've shown you how to do that with the first one so i'll skip the make queries but i just want to so that you can also make queries here okay so now let's save the DSIC results we are going to save the original results which is the seek result and we're also going to save the filtered results and after that we also save the normalized counts we've not done that yet we will do everything here so let's start with the results so to save the results this is what we do we say write.csv i'll say the seek results and i'll say de results not all i'm saving everything so this is the unfiltered one and then i'll execute this command now i'll save the filtered one so that'll be write.csv filtered and that'll be what de results dot filter.csv and notice the description here i say dot or here i say filtered so it's um it's this information helps me to immediately see what the data is about 
So I always have naming conventions. So I also advise that you do same. So I'll save this as well. Now we are going to save the normalized read counts. So first of all, you need to get them. So to get a normalized read count, you can let's you let's say normalize counts. You say counts. DDS normalized equals true. Then we can get a normalized count. So let's run this. You can even do a head just to see what is there. Let's see what is here. But we are going to save that. So you will say write.csv normalize. Counts. Let me see. Normalize counts. Your CSV. So let's run this to save it. So here we are saving for all the genes, but you can also subset and save for the filtered one. You can also do that. So now we have saved the district two results. So we can check them out. Let's go and then open them. So we have the gene expression results here, this and then this. We also have the normalized counts. Because they are all CSV files, we can open them with spreadsheet software. So we can open them. I'll open mine here. Let me open it here. And you can see what has been indicated so this is what we have so you can open them you can explore just do whatever you want with it let's open let's open the other ones let's open this one and this one okay so i have opened the filtered one as well, and I'll also open the normalized count. So you can open them and then explore what you have, and then um, you can also do some analysis and then some other processing. So, and that's it. So, this is how we use the SIG2 to identify differential express genes. Now, the values we have here, you can see that if you look at the, the SIG2 result, the first one, the unfiltered one, we have lots of genes, thousands of them. The filtered one, you also have about 222. You also have a normalized counts. Now, with this information here, it becomes easier to interpret and understand if you visualize them. So, what we are going to do next is to visualize the gene expression data that we have generated. So, let's go back to the R interface and then do the visualization. Okay, we are now going to visualize the DSIC results. So we will start by plotting the dispersion estimates. So we will say plot this ESTS and then we will specify the DSIC objects. So we will say DDS. So let's run this command. Okay, so our plot has been generated. A typical dispersion plot will look like this. Let's go to the DSIC documentation page. This is how a typical dispersion plot will look like. And according to the DSIC documentation here, if you have a plot which is different from what is here, then it could be due to a number of factors. Okay, so the sample size, the number of coefficients, the row mean, and the variability of the genwise estimates or affect, or they can affect, or they influence the plots that be generated. Okay, so with the plots, we are looking at the shrinkage. And so the amount of shrinkage can be more or less than seen here. Okay, so if what you have here is different, then you should consider investigating your data. So 
you can look into the sample size number of coefficients then these other factors that have been stated here so this is what we have if you compare the plots here with our plots they are kind of similar okay so this tells us that our data is okay well according to i mean the dispersion plots that we have here okay so uh, that's what we have so let's go back to the r environment and then generate our next plot we are now going to generate a pca plot a pca stands for principal component analysis and it is a dimensionality reduction technique that is used um, in a lot of um, data analysis and in gene expression analysis pca can be used to explain the variance in gene expression data sets so to generate a pca plot we are going to first perform a variance stabilizing transformation then we are going to use the transform values to generate our pca plots so this is how we are going to do it we will perform the variance stabilizing transformation here So we will say VSD, then we say VST. So the VST function is the variance stabilizing transformation. So we will do this and then we will specify the basic object, which is DDS, and then we say blind equals false. So we will execute this command. And after that, we are going to use the transform values to generate a PCA plot. And that is what we are going to do here. So we will say plot PC. That is the function we use to plot the PC. So we say plot PC. And it produces the function that we are going to use to generate the PCA plot. So we have plot PCA and then we specify VSD. Then we specify the end group. So the end group here will be equals to, and then we are going to indicate the factors. So we have two factors. So we will say sequencing, and then we have what? Treatments. These are the two factors. So let's execute this command. Okay, so we have our PCA plot. So in this plot, we have two dimensions which we refer to as the principal component. So we have principal component one, that is PC1, and we also have PC2. So PC1 explains 59% of the variance, and then PC2 explains 26% of the variance. So let's take a look at what you have. And before I even proceed, let me say that there's a color code here to help you to distinguish between the various samples you can also annotate the samples okay and just to um, try to maybe add more information so it's possible to add the sample names or the sample ids here so that's something that you can do now let's continue now let's take a look at the first pc and that is pc1 pc1 explains 59 percent of the variance in the data PC1 is separating the treated from the untreated. So how do we know this? If you take a look at the color code here, we see that this color is for paired and treated. We also have this color for single and treated. And we can see them here. So we have paired and treated. We also have single and treated. And then we also have untreated. So we have this color and then this color. And those ones are here. Okay, so looking at this figure, we see a clear separation between the treated and then untreated okay so that is what this pc1 is doing for us this also means that there is a part in the data that allows us to separate these two groups i.e treated and then untreated okay so uh, that is what this plot is showing us now let's move on to pc2 pc2 is separating the single end data set from the paired end data set. So again, let's take a look at our color scheme here. So we have SE, that's a single end, this, and then this. 
these are all single end data sets so we have them here this is single end and this is also single end okay so you can see all of them here and we also have the pair end, which are this and then this that's what we have here okay so this principal components too is separating the single end which are here from the pair end okay so that is why it's also a strain invariant so in this case what we are distinguishing or what we are separating are or it's the type of sequence we are dealing with that's single end or paired end and so these are the factors that we had sequencing that is single or paired end and then treatments that is what um, treated and untreated and the pca plot we have here has uh, explained that for, for us because it has been able to separate these um, factors okay for us. so this explains a lot okay so if you have this then it helps us to be confident that yes indeed the experiments we did was good the data we had is good but the data had already been um, labeled okay so we already know that the samples are what we have paired and treated paired and untreated single and treated single and untreated and so having the pca plots here separating all these um, samples for us into their various groups um, um, gives us um, a higher statistical power okay when it comes to our our data so it's a good thing that we are doing so that's about it now if you take a look at the balance to right it also points out that there seems to be no hidden effects present in the data okay so when we talk about hidden effects uh, one hidden effect that we can have is what you call batch effects okay um, in some cases we can also say these hidden effects are unwanted uh, variation okay it, it, I, I, this one i'm saying this so it, it has to be taken on a case by case situation so batch effects which can be a hidden effect or which can be an unwanted variation it's something that is possible to correct okay you can correct for this when using the six so if you know that you have samples that um, can um, influence the results or that can lead to batch effects then it's possible to uh, correct for this by including any known bad variables in the design so that's something that you have to um, look at so if you take a look at the dc online documentation you have information and that will help you to correct for batch effect it's something that i'll, I'll probably cover in another tutorial but for now let's just uh, proceed okay so that's about it for pca plots so let's move on to our next uh, visualization that is heat map so let's do that now the next plots we are going to generate are heat maps we are going to use the r package called p heat map for this heat maps are a great way to visualize gene expression data with heat maps it's possible to identify groups of genes with similar expression patterns and you can also use heat maps to identify genes that are commonly regulated and this also helps to identify signatures that are associated with a particular condition heat maps will come or usually come with a color code that can be used to interpret the plots and so in this tutorial we are going to plot three different heat maps so i have them listed here we will plot heat map of sample to sample distance matrix with clustering. Okay, we, we are going to use a normalized read count. And we are also going to plot a heat map of um, the log transform normalized read count. And we are also going to plot heat map using the z scores. Okay, so we will start with the first one, which is heat map of sample to sample distance matrix. So to generate the it's map of sample to sample distance matrix. We will first generate the distance matrix. So that will be done using this command. Let me just put a comment here first. So we will first generate our distance matrix. And for that, we'll use this function. So I'll say sample this. And I'll call the function which is this D I S T. And then I'll 
give this other command so i'll use asset and then i'll use vsd that is the variance stabilizing transformation so this is how we will do it. this is the first step that we'll use okay in this particular activity that is generating the distance matrix so i'll run this command and then the next step will be used to generate the sample distance matrix itself so i'll say sample this matrix and i'll say as dot matrix so i'll just use this objects that is sample this perfect so now we have generated a sample distance matrix okay that's what it is we can also just do this just to confirm so we can say call names and call sample distance matrix okay that's sample this matrix so we can do this just to get a column name so here's what we have to get okay because we are plotting the samples so once we have this we are ready to go okay so we have this so what we are going to do next is to set a color scheme okay we will use the color scheme when generating the heat map so i'll set a color scheme or color code or whatever you want to call it uh, so i'll set a color scheme here i'm using blues so i'll say colors then i'll say color ramp palettes then i'll give this command here let me make sure i have it correct so i have this and then i'll say reward dots power and the palettes and then i'll give some um, code here so i have nine and i have blues that's what i have here and then finally i will say two five five that's the color range so i'll set this color scheme i will leave all useful links in the description box links that you can also use to do your own plotting so just check the description box for it so i have this done so i'll just execute this command okay so i have set the color scheme so now i am going to use p heat map to generate the sample to sample distance matrix so that will be the next step so i will say in the heat map and then i will say p heat map then i will specify the distance matrix the one we generated which is this one and then i will say clustering distance because we want to cluster we are going to generate a cluster we want to add some clustering so I'll say clustering distance and then I'll indicate the rules because and I'll say sample this that's what I have here and then I'll use another one here let me just go to the next line I'll say clustering distance And this time i am going to use columns so this one here okay and then i will say sample this and then i'll also indicate the color scheme so that is this one here okay equals colors okay that's what we have here so once we are done with this code we can execute it so i'll execute it now so now we can see the distance matrix okay so i use blues that's a color scheme here so let's take a look at this plot here i'll enlarge it a bit here i could have also saved it by the way but i just want us to use the r um, environment 
So in this heat map, the color represents the distance between the samples. That's what it means. So the dark blue here that we see, I mean, there's a color. Yeah, let me just um, state that first. So there's a color scheme here. I use blues. Okay, so we are going to have shades of blues here. I made mention that the sample to sample distance metrics is used to give an overview of similarities and the similarity between samples okay with respect to the gene expression data and we are using normalized counts so in this particular image here in this plot here the dark blue that we see here uh, means a shorter distance so that means as the color approaches this side here it's a shorter distance so the shorter distance means what high similarity that's what it means and so once you have this color scheme, it becomes easy to interpret what you have here. So we can even look at some of the comparison. So let's look at what we have. So let's take a look at this one here. This is GSM 11803 ted Okay, We have that here. So if you take a look at this, we take a look at this one here. We see that these are similar, okay, and based on the color code here. It's around this side here. So it's similar compared to the same sample. Okay. And this one here. So this and this, they are similar, but then this and then this, uh, they are, they are, uh, they are they, in terms of similarity, this one and this one is less. Okay. So comparatively, you can see that this and this, they are more similar than this sample and then this sample. Okay, and some two are very, 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 very dissimilar. For example, this one here. And then this one here. Okay, so this one, again, again, this one, and then this one, they are very, very dissimilar. Okay, because when you look at the color, it's in this region. Okay, so uh, having this image here, help you to get a general overview of the similarities that can also help you to tell a good story it can help you to interpret the data that we are dealing with so uh, these things you have to do them because with gene expression data there is a lot of exploration and that exploration that you do will reveal the insights and these insights will help you to answer your biological question so that's what we have okay so now let's move on to the next plot so in the next plot we are going to use log transform normalize counts. We are going to use the top 10 genes for this one. So let's do that. There is also a heat map, by the way. So let me show you how that is also done. We are now going to get a top 10 genes. The top 10 genes are the most significantly expressed genes. We are going to refer to them as the top 10 hits. So to get the most significantly expressed genes, we will first have to order the sequence results let's just scroll up to see this we are going to order the six result just as we did with this one here but this time instead of using p value we are going to use the p adjusted value okay so that means after we have issued this command the records are going to be arranged in order of increasing adjusted p value and then we are going to pick the first 10 those are the top tangents that's what we are going to do because the smaller the p adjusted value the more significant it is or let me just say the more significantly expressed that gene is so let's scroll down and then we are going to perform the activity so let's start so let's get the top 10 genes or the top 10 hits so to do that we will say top hits top underscore hits and then we say equals and we will say the seek results we bring our square bracket we will say order we bring our parentheses again and we say the seek results and we say dollar p adjusted then we will say comma and then we have our square brackets after that we will bring a square bracket again because we want the first 10 the top 10 so 1 to 10 and then comma again 
So this is how we will get a top 10 gens. So let's issue this command. And then we want the names. So I'll say top it's equals row dot names top hits. I want just the names. So I can just query again. So I can just query again. I can say top hits. I want the top 10 gens. So these are the top 10 gens. Okay, so that's what we have. Now we are going to perform the log transformation. And after that, we are going to subset. Okay, we are going to get a record for these gens, the top 10 gens. So let's perform the log transformation. So to perform the log transformation with the seek, we will use the our log function. Okay, so we will say, let me just bring some comments here first. So I'll say top tangents. And now let's look at the our log transformation. So to get a log transformation, using the seek we will say rld and i'll say r log and i'll say dds blind equals force so i'll execute this command and then i am going to subset and get a record for this and then after subsetting, I'll call pHeatMap. So I'll do everything using a one-liner command. So that's what I'll do. I'll say pHeatMap. And then I'll say, I'll say, I'll bring my brackets. I'll say RLD. And then I'll say, Top hits and then I'll bring a comma. I can add other options so I can say cluster rules equals false show row names equals true cluster calls equals false. So let's execute this command. Okay, so we will have our hit map given to us now this figure here we have disabled clustering so if you want to enable clustering then you can say this let's just redo this command here so if you want to enable clustering you can just remove this one here okay by default clustering is enabled so we can issue this so let's execute this command so if you do that we are going to get the clustering done for us okay now if you have done clustering then it's also advisable that you add additional information which we will call annotation so the annotation will help us know the various groups of these samples so let's do that so let's add annotation so to add annotation we will do this we will say df let me just put it here df you can use any name at all so i'll say df or let me just say annotes info let me use this one rather so i'll say annot info as dot data dot frame and i'll say call data and then I'll say DDS. And then I'll bring a square bracket. And then I'll say C sequencing treatments. So let's execute this command. So we have done that 
So we are now going to add that information to the plot, the cluster plot. So I'll say this, I'll say P heat map, I say RLD, and then I bring my top hits again, top hits. And then when I come here, I can say, I can, let, let's just start with this. I'll bring all this again. I'll bring them here. And then I'll say, I'll bring this to another line. I'll say, annotation call. That's annotation column equals annotate info. So let's execute this command. So if you do that, you will have this popping up. Okay, so this it gives some color, and you can use that color to identify the various groups. Okay, the groups, or to let's say to identify each sample and then the group that's that sample belongs to so that's a spot we have here so you can try again and this time enable clustering so that's also possible now let's continue please take note that if you look at other tutorials it's likely that the criteria for selecting the top tangents or the top tangents or the top hits okay uh, will be different okay so what i did here was to show you one way to get a top tangents or the top hits so you can look at what has been done in publications look at the best practices and choose the appropriate or an appropriate criteria okay that works for you so take note of that now let's continue now we are going to do this we are going to also generate a heat map of this course so let's do that now Okay, we are now going to generate a heat map using this course. For those who don't know what this course are, you can check the Galaxy tutorial page. So on the page, just scroll down to this section here. Visualization of expression of differential expression. So when you click it, you'll be sent to this section. So scroll down a bit and we are going to find the computational visualization of the Zisco. So I will encourage you to read this information here and then that will get you started. So for this tutorial, we are going to use a function, an R function to compute the Zisco and then we are going to select the top 10 genes and then visualize them. So let's go back to the R interface. Okay, so we are on the R interface now. Okay, we are in the R interface. So we are in the R environments now. So I'll create a function, an R function, by the way, that will compute the Z scores. So I'll say cal Z score. By the way, this function I got is from Dave Town's blog. I will leave the link to that page in the description box. So I'll just issue this command. So there's the function, then x, and then I'll say x minus me x, and then we divide by standard deviation. So there's the function. So this will compute as this course for us. Okay, so. The x here is generic. We are going to place in our data when we call the function. So we have this function done. So we are now going to compute this course. So to compute this course, I'll say z score all. That means all the genes, the entire data sets, the normalized count. That's what we are using. And then I'll say t apply normalize counts 
and then one, and then call z score. So this will compute the z scores for us. So after doing that, we will now subset our top tangents. We already have our top tangents. Okay, remember we have to do that. Here. So we have them here, top hits. So we are going to subset them here. So I will say z score subset. And then I'll say z score. All. And then I will indicate my top hits. So I have that done. So I will now call p heat map. So I'll say p heat map. And then I'll specify my z score subsets. And then I'll use the default settings. So let's execute this command. Perfect. So we have done that. So now we have our Z scores here. Okay. So we are using the top tangents. Okay. So once you have this, you can then look at the expression patterns here and then uh, try to make a sense out of what you have. So that's for the Z scores. Okay. Now P hit map also has an inbuilt function that can be used to compute these scores and then use the these scores to generate the hit mouse okay so you can also do that but i had to use this one because i first had to compute the these scores for all the gens and then i did a subset okay so that's also possible now let's proceed we are now going to generate an ma plot so let's do that also Okay, we are now going to generate our MA plots. MA plots are plots of mean expression versus log 2 4 chain. The mean expression values are on the X axis and the log 2 4 chain values are on the Y axis. MA plots are useful for visualizing the distribution of gene expressions. So if you're using the seek, then you will have to use the plot MA function to generate your MA plot. So that's how we do it. We say plot MA and then you specify your seek objects, which is DDS. Let's add a Y limit. We will use negative two and then two. So let's execute this command. Perfect. Now we have our MA plot. So we have our mean of normalized count and then the log full change. Now, if you take a look at this MA plot, we have some points colored gray, some are colored blue. The blue points are those with adjusted p values less than 0 0.1. You may not see blue, you may see a different color, but if you see a different color, it's the same meaning. Those points have adjusted p values less than 0 0.1. The seek by default uses 0 0.1, but it's possible to change this value. So just check the DC documentation and then you'll be able to learn how to do that. You can also contact me and then I'll try and then get it for you. So let's continue. Now, if you take a look at this. Let me plot here. There's a lot of noise in the data. Okay. And so it's possible to remove this noise. So to do that, we will have to use a log for change shrinkage. So that's what we are going to do next. We are going to generate another MA plot, but this time we are going to remove the noise first and then generate that plot. So let's do that. So let's remove the noise. So we will use the log for change shrinkage. So to do that, we will say rest LFC. And then we say LFC shrink. And then we will specify our basic objects and then our coef. So here is going to be treatments underscore treated versus Unfitted, and then we will indicate a type which is APEGLM. So let's execute this command. Perfect. So now we have done that. 
so it's advisable to remove the noise and then it generate the plot so that's what we have done okay so you can check the receipt documentation and then look at other ways of generating the any plots so that's what we have so let's continue so this is how we generate the MA plots. Okay. Okay, so now we have removed the noise. So we are now going to generate the MA plots. So to do that, we will say plot MA. And then this time, instead of using the DSIC object, that is DDS, we are going to use the one with the noise removed so that'll be what rest lfc and then ylm equals negative two and then two so let's execute this command perfect so now you will see a new plot here so you notice that the noise has been removed so now we have a, a good looking ma plot okay so that's how we generate ma plots using the six so we first generated one where the noise was included and we have removed the noise and generated another one so that's what we have now okay, so that's what we have so that's how we generate an ma plot when working with the six now let's move on to the last plots and that is volcano plots okay we are now going to generate our volcano plots so before we generate the volcano plots we will need to change this rest lfc to a data frame so i'll do that here so i'll just add this comment so i'll say change rest lfc to a data frame so i'll use this command to change it so let's execute this command okay so we have changed that object to editor frame now we are going to add labels so we will label agents okay so we want the up regulated down regulated and those that are not differentially expressed so we are going to add the label so to add the labels we will have to specify some commands so we'll start with this one so this is the first label which is new so all of the gems will be labeled as new that means they are not differentially expressed okay that's the first step and then the next step we will now add the app regulated okay we will label them so here what we did was to add another column which is diff express that's the column name and then we populated it with default values which is no so now we have to add the app regulated okay so that should be done using this command so here what we are doing is that all entries all gens with log 2 for change greater than 0 0.1 and adjusted p-value less than 0 0.05 will be labeled as app regulated remember we did something like that where we filtered using some criteria let's just check that's here yeah this one here so we are using the same criteria here so let's go back to our command so that's what we have done here so all gens with log 2 full change is greater than 0 0.1 and p adjusted values less than 0 0.05 will be labeled as app that is app regulated okay so that's how you do it now let's look at the down regulated gens and so for that one it's a similar command like this by this time we are saying less than 0 0.1 for log 2 fold change this value the PISF value remains the same so let's run this command as well perfect that has been done now we will also add this column okay so this column is there so that we can get our dj plus to work so i'll add this column that is also done now i'm going to 
specify my jj plus command to generate the volcano plots so i'll do that now let me just paste that command here so this is the command we'll use to generate the volcano plots so i'll execute this command now Perfect, we have generated the volcano plots. Now, notice that I use the REST LFC, that is the data with the noise removed. That is what I use. But you can also choose to use the raw data, the one with the noise included. That is up to you, but I chose to use the one with the noise removed. Okay, so you will have to check and see which one works best for you. Now, with the volcano plot, I have covered it in detail in another video okay so i will encourage you to check that video where i showed how to generate volcano plots and also add some additional annotations okay so, so just check that video okay you can click this link right here or check the description box and then learn more about that so that's about it so this is how we generate a volcano plot using the seek and ginger plots okay so we have been able to run the sync we have been able to perform the differential expression analysis we have also been able to do some visualizations so in the next episode that's what we are going to do we are going to look at this session here analysis of functional enrichment among the differential expression that's the next episode okay so for now I'm going to end the tutorial and in the next episode, we are going to continue by looking at this. And then by the end of that session, you'll be able to perform your gene ontology analysis. And then you'll also be able to perform your Keck pathway analysis. So you'll be able to generate this plot as well as this plot using our command. So that's what we are going to do next. And so if you have any suggestion or any comments, or if there's something that you think should have been added, you can indicate all those stuff in the comments section. Let's all discuss and then learn something new. And again, let me say that the R script is available on my Patreon channel. So I will leave the link to that script in the description box. So just use the link and download. So uh, if you have the script then you don't need to go through all the steps you don't need to type everything so just go for the script and the data sets then just execute modify and then just um, use them for your own data so that's all for this tutorial and i'll see you in the next session